So hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Living Life Naturally, where today our special guest is Dr. Jo uh, Russell Jaffe. He is an internist, a molecular biochemist, a clinical pathologist and diagnostician. So seeing an opportunity and clinical need for more bioavailable, highly effective and advanced dietary guidance, he actually designed each perk functional supplement using novel principles and concepts. The variety of outcome studies, case reports, and patients that are pending on PERC su supplements attest to how unique the products are. From starting uh, purified to production control, from ingredients synergy to cost effectiveness, from value to outcome results. Dr. Jaffe teaches and lectures widely on nutritional Im immunology and treatment guidelines for chronic autoimmune and immune dysfunction syndromes. And he's helped um, elucidate the causes and the consequences of immune defense and repair functions in health and disease. And his research interests focus on outcome studies based on effective comprehensive care guidelines and practice parameters. So a huge welcome, a warm welcome to you, Dr. Jaffe. We're glad to have you here. Thanks for the invitation. And tell our listeners where you're joining us from today. Oh, my R&D center is here in Vienna, Virginia. Awesome. So I'm really interested in this because actually my family and I have been having a, a conversation over the last few weeks about autoimmune and immune dysfunction. So that kind of fits in really nicely with what it is that you do. But you've also uh, mentioned to me, I didn't mention it in your bio, that you trained in the con conventional Western medicine. So what led you into Eastern medicine? Western medicine is really good up to a certain point, and then it really catastrophically fails. Eastern medicine is good up to a certain point, after which it's limited. We need a best of both approach. Mm -hmm. I agree. I came as a skeptic. I studied acupuncture mm -hmm. and TCM with Queen Wu for seven years. I was a skeptic about yoga and Ayurveda, and I became a student of Ramamurti Mishra for five years. And then I met a Cambodian Buddhist monk named Bhante Dharmawara, who absolutely rocked my world. Mm. So now you kind of integrate both of them, I was, I'm assuming. It's a both and approach. I don't yeah. see any conflict between science and spirit. I don't see any conflict right. between East and West. Yes, the language is a barrier. If I talk to you in Sanskrit, you probably won't <laughs> understand much of what I say. Right. And I was a student of Dr. Mishra in Sanskrit, but I was his worst student. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a linguist. Uh, so, you believe in individualized and personal care. So why is it so important? And what do you believe the challenges are with our current healthcare system? Well, the current, what we call healthcare, yeah. is really sick care. It waits until you're sick, and yes. then it does its best to patch you up with prescriptions and procedures. What if you could take action years to decades ahead and prevent the autoimmune specifically? We can talk about cardiovascular, we can talk about other big ticket uh, items, but autoimmunity means diabetes. It includes asthma. It includes multiple sclerosis. It includes pneumonitis. It includes glomerulonephritis. And I could go on and on and on because there are hundreds of autoimmune conditions, all characterized, all 100% characterized 
by an immune system, immune defense and repair system that is overly active and under functioning. And we want to reverse that and we know how. So let me ask you this, because it's some, this is, has been part of our conversation. So are migraines considered to be an autoimmune disorder? Well, migraines may well be an autoimmune disorder. A fellow named Bob Egger, E-G-G-E-R, studied people with migraines and found that food provocation carefully, carefully done was associated with 88% or more of migraine headaches. Right. That makes them autoimmune. But if you're a neurologist, right. <laughs> you might uh, take a more mechanistic view. Right. So I, I suffer with migraines. And so that's always been my understanding. And I know a huge part of that is, is dietary. So then another question that came up, and I'm interested in this. So both my son and I have had mono. His was just a three week thing. When I had mono as a child, I was down for the count, totally disabled for six months. Would that be considered autoimmune? No, uh, this is going to be a little technical, but forgive me. Uh, your immune defense and repair system was not able to defend you successfully against the virus. At a molecular level, that means the redox was too high and the magnesium was too low. Then you were disposed, predisposed to migraines and other autoimmunities, but this was an important milestone on the way. It is not in and of itself considered autoimmune by the virologists who study it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I, I, I know that when we think about autoimmune disease, I, I feel that our Western medicine is so ill-equipped for dealing with this specific issue um, because they want to treat the symptoms and not necessarily. Well, they, 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 they are trained. They are, you know, the, the catechism of the religion of medicine is to treat, not to prevent. We, we all admire prevention. We all, um, but we don't pay for prevention. We do not prioritize prevention. We say it would be nice if we could prevent this, but we can't. And therefore, we're going to have to spend four this year, four trillion U.S. dollars on sick care. Yes. Wow. So tell us a little bit then about the supplements, the whole perk integrative health. Well, this is a very important point, because if you look at the 19th or 20th century, we're going to have a discussion. If you look at the 21st century, in the 21st century, we are marinating in a sea of anti-nutrient toxins. Yes. That is not an opinion. Yes. That is a fact. And therefore, we have to up our game of the pro-nutrient uh, uh, anti-oxidative factors, and you can't do that with diet alone. You just can't keep up with the toxic load. So supplementation is important. Supplementation starts in the kitchen because what you eat and drink, yes. what you think and do, do matter a lot, but you must, must supplement intelligently um, and widely to survive the 21st century. So what kind of supplements do you um, have in your practice? Well, uh, I don't practice anymore. I well, practice till I got it right. Um, no, I teach doctors how to do what I do. Yes, it starts with eating low on the food chain, foods that you can digest, assimilate, and eliminate without immune burden, without immune burden, without immune burden. And we know how to assess the immune burden. Then targeted supplementation, including what we call LifeGuard. LifeGuard is a super multi with 40 active ingredients in meaningful amounts. 
not 20, 40. Then there's vitamin C and the amount of ascorbate vitamin C and you need nature's vitamin C is dependent on the C cleanse. That's a procedure that you do yourself. You take certain amounts of ascorbate until you cleanse. And then you use that guidance personally to determine how much ascorbate you're gonna take on a daily basis. Then vitamin D. Very important that your vitamin D be between 50 and 80. If it's less than 50, you need more. If it's 80 or more, you need to take less. We do know the healthy range for vitamin D. Mm -hmm. We do know how to determine the ascorbate and polyphenolic needs of individuals with the sequence. We do know how much of the super multi, what we call lifeguard, to take because you keep your urine sunshine yellow. And then there are other supplements, EPA, DHA, omega-3 fatty acids are massively deficient in the Western world and omega-6 fatty acids are massively um, up. Omega-6 you get from processed food. Omega-3 you get from fish oil. And yes, you can get it from algae and from krill, but it's a very poor source of either. So let the algae be algae. You need both EPA and DHA. You need EPA for bone and body. You need uh, DHA uh, for, bone, for body and bone. You need both. They're not interconvertible. But they must be mycelized. They must be protected. You must distill them under nitrogen to, to take the bad things away and leave the good things in a concentrated form. So it's not just fish oil. It's fish oil that is safer and more effective. And then you get to sleep, which is very important. And most people fall into bed when they're tired. They do not transition right. intelligently mm -hmm. to sleep restoratively. And restorative sleep is essential. Just yes. trust me, it's essential. Yes. So for 30 minutes, you can spend five minutes breathing abdominally, breathing like a baby, and then 15 minutes of active meditation under a green dichromatic light while soaking in a salt and soda bath or a personal sweat cabinet. So in just 30 minutes, you can get a lot of good things got, done. And we recommend that people do them. <laughs> so to, thinking back to the, to the immune defense system, why is it important? And of course, I know it's even more important during this whole pandemic stuff, but why is it important to strengthen your immune defense and repair system? And how are some of the ways that we can do that? Well, what you want is to be able to eat and drink things that do not provoke immune responses. To find out what does and doesn't provoke responses, you need a lymphocyte response assay that we provide in our laboratory. And that says, here's all the things you can have, and here's the few things you must avoid. And it isn't categorical. By that, I mean, it isn't about more protein or less protein, more fat or less fat. That that's important too. We can get to that in a moment. But you should have a test of your immune defense and repair system to determine what is riling it up, what is provoking it, what is making it impaired, what is provoking the autoimmunity. And I know that... Um and I've seen this in people's lives and the way that I have helped people in the past, but let's talk about the acid versus 
alkaline? What does it mean and what happens when you're out of balance? It's yes, a big will, one. Cause... I'm only going to talk about nature's alkaline way. There are many ways of trying to fool Mother Nature that I think make a fool out of the person who tries to fool Mother Nature. Now, you can follow nature's alkaline way in the following way. You check your urine in the morning to see how much magnesium and choline citrate you need throughout the day. You check the pH of your urine. If it's between six and a half and seven and a half, you're fine. If it's below six and a half, you need more magnesium. For every half pH unit, you need an extra dose of magnesium and choline citrate. The choline citrate is essential to get the magnesium in. If you do not take the choline citrate and you take enough magnesium, you will run to the bathroom with the runs. I take to daily, daily, 1,320 milligrams of supplemental magnesium plus my diet, and I do not run to the bathroom because I take choline citrate with it. So you have to use the supplements intelligently and with the evidence of the 21st century to help you decide what to do and what not to do. Okay. And what difference does it make in our body if it's acid versus alkaline? That's a very profound and important question. If our body is more acid, we have metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis is associated with hospitality to viruses, prions that are harmful, um, mycoplasma that are harmful. All harmful things have a high, uh, thrive, they prefer a high redox environment. Ascorbate, vitamin C, nature's vitamin C, sets the redox. Nothing else, just vitamin C. Therefore, we need to take enough vitamin C to keep our redox low and keep the viruses and other pathogens shut down because a low redox shuts them down and a high redox stimulates them. And then you get to the acid issue, which is magnesium, essentially, because magnesium is the buffer for the acids inside the cell. Magnesium activates ATP. Magnesium activates the mitochondria. Magnesium activates many catalysts in the body. Magnesium is essential and magnesium is hard to get in and it tends to run out as quickly as it comes in. And we have solved that problem with choline citrate. So then I would ask the question, where does one get your specific brand of, of vitamins or supplements? Well, you get them from professionals. These are not available in retail uh, forums for a very simple reason. Our cost of goods is twice as high as anyone else in the industry. If you heard what I said about bioavailable nutrients and more of the good nutrients, that translates into higher cost of goods otherwise, <laughs> otherwise you'd live on another planet so health professionals make these available directly to their clients and that's we think that the intelligence of the professional whether it's a health coach or a doctor but somebody needs to help guide what people should do Okay. And, and we have, we have, by the way, the PIH Academy, which certifies people to do what it is we think they should do. The Health Studies Collegium Foundation sponsors the PIH Academy. And this is the fourth year of the PIH Academy. Come and take the online years one, two, and three, and join us for year four together. And so if you were, if there was, say, just one or two things that you could tell our audience, um, whether it's generalized health or something specific, what would it be? Stay hydrated and get restorative sleep. And you, you, asked, you asked it in the form of a lightning round, so I have right. to respond. And right. so I'm now going to put you on the spot and say, sure. so, okay, um, 
there's so much talk about sleep. I do webinars and lives about sleep. So explain to people exactly what is the difference between sleep other than, as you've said, you just flop into bed because you're tired. What is restorative sleep? Restorative sleep means that for every 90 minute sleep cycle, you have five minutes when your pituitary releases factors that promote health. So every 90 minutes of restorative sleep, you go through a five minute cycle that benefits everything. The first three of those sleep cycles are essential. That's an hour and a half times three, six hours. Some people need six hours. Some people need 10 or 12 hours. I need six hours. Mm -hmm. The love of my life needs 10 or 12. If you disturb her during that time, she will not be happy. <laughs> okay, so we, we get very personal. And I know you, you've talked about the 30 minute um, routine as I, or well, sleeping Well, the 30 habits. minute routine is part of 72 minutes a day that will save your life. 72 minutes is 5% of your day. If you can invest 5% of your day in yourself, that will include 30 minutes. That includes the following. Five minutes of abdominal breathing, five minutes of breathing like a baby, 15 minutes of active meditation while you soak or sweat under a green dichromatic light. Then you towel off with the fluffiest, most luxurious towel you can, because just brushing the skin is, is helpful. Then you stretch for five minutes and you get into bed and you sleep like a baby. And this takes care of the issue that some people have, especially in midlife where they keep waking up in the night. Well, there, there are many reasons to awaken in the night, but they're all reasons to, to change your sleep habits. Right. There, 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 there's a lot to that, but in essence, restorative sleep habits, the, 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 what I just said to evoke, provoke, present, uh, to, to make available restorative sleep, it's very important. Sleeping is very important for survival. It's not just wasting time. Many people believe that if they're up and about and doing something that's constructive, but if they're napping or sleeping, that that's lazy. It's not lazy. <laughs> it's essential. Now, you did mention earlier on something about anti-nutrients or anti-nutrients, as I would call them. Exactly yes. what are those and, and how do we avoid them? Well, there are five categories of anti-nutrients. The first category are called POPs, persisting organic pollutants. These are the everything molecules that are hormone disruptors. Then the second category is volatile organic chemicals known as solvents. The third category is toxic metals. That means lead, mercury, nickel, arsenic, cadmium. Um, the fourth category is mold products. And the fifth category is radioisotopes. All of those deplete the essential nutrients. All of those are anti-nutrients. And so how do we avoid them? Well, 80% we uh, uh, eighty percent of our exposure is recent. 80% of our exposure is brought into our environment. So you can reduce 80% by doing very simple things like taking your shoes off when you come home, uh, taking off your exterior clothes and putting on interior clothes when you come home, uh, having an air purifier or air cleaner in your environment. You can dramatically reduce the exposure to the toxins of everyday life. That was actually on my Christmas list was an air purifier this year. Um, which yes, there HEPA, there's HEPA, OPA is better than HEPA. Uh, then there is molecular, which actually zaps the particles electrolytically, but something that cleans the air. 
Yeah, living here in Florida, we have an awful lot of pollen. So um, that, that's especially bad for my husband who has allergies to so much. So mm -hmm. he's really found that very helpful. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So do you have any last minute thoughts or tips that you would care to pass on to our listeners? Stay hydrated and laugh. Okay, so where can people find you? Oh, drrusselljaffe.com is a website that we support and sustain. Healthstudiescollegium.org is a foundation of which I'm a fellow, and that supports the PIH Academy that I mentioned. Um, there's also perk.com, P-E-R-Q-U-E.com, uh, the sponsor of this event. Uh, Eliza Act, E-L-I-S-A-A-C-T, ElizaAct.com. Uh, that's the lab. And then most perhaps important, uh, there's betterlabtestsnow.com. Betterlabtests, plural, not dot com. BLTN, betterlabtestsnow.com, uh, is a consumer portal that allows people to access tests and interpretations of the results with the help of health coaches. Awesome. And then you have a book, correct? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I almost forgot. Yes, we have a book of how to survive the 21st century. And we would be eager to share this in multiple formats, print, uh, Kindle uh, type, and soon, soon, an audio book. Awesome. Well, I will put that in our show notes so that everybody has access to it. And thank you for being with us today. This is um, interesting information, very different, I'm sure, for a lot of people. And we appreciate the work that you're doing. And thank you so much. You have been listening to the Living Life Naturally podcast, where we're on a mission to inform, inspire, and encourage women to live their best life confidently, joyfully, and freely from what's been holding them back. For show notes and free resources, visit holistic-healthandwellness.com. And I'd be delighted if you'd follow us on socials to connect further. If you enjoyed this show, why not share it with your friends? If you found good value, chances are they will too. And of course, a five-star review on iTunes is always greatly appreciated as much as I appreciate you listening. So until next time, Live life naturally and joyfully.